People like to say that the brain is like a computer. Sometimes I think mine is kind of like a smartphone with all kinds of apps running on it at once. But there's something that's not quite right with these comparisons. See, a computer, even a very complex one, can only process information through binary switches, ones and zeros, on or off. A single image might contain millions of bits of information, but each of those bits can really only switch between two settings, on or off. Now, the brain is also full of switches, more than a hundred billion of them, but they're not binary. There are special cells called neurons, and each one is sort of a tiny computer all on its own. See, each neuron is constantly hard at work, making slight adjustments to the electrochemical conditions in and around itself, holding its voltage right at a certain level. But when it receives an incoming signal from one or more of its dendrites, those electrochemical conditions change, pushing the neuron toward its firing threshold. If the incoming signal is really strong and insistent, the neuron's voltage gets pushed past the threshold and the cell fires a quick burst of signals, almost like super fast Morse code, down its axon, and then the cell goes out of commission for a while to reprime itself. Meanwhile, the signals it's sent out are propagating on to more and more neurons, which continue the process. Now, here's where things get even cooler. Synapses, the connections a neuron has, aren't all the same. Some are stronger and some are weaker. There's a saying in neuroscience, cells that fire together, wire together. In other words, neural networks actively physically change as they take in new information. That's what gives our brains the ability to learn. In fact, millions of neurons are delicately tinkering with their connectivity patterns right now inside your head as you learn this stuff. That's pretty cool, right? You could say that synapses, the connections a neuron has, are kind of like traffic lights. A really strong synapse is like a green light, it lets lots of signals pass through. But some synapses are weaker, they're more like yellow lights, they only let a signal through now and then. And some synapses can actually inhibit others, acting like red lights, they don't let any signals pass through. Some of us feel that yellow and red are open to interpretation. Anyway, if a particular synapse goes untraveled for long enough, the road starts to crumble away until finally there's no synapse left. Which leads to the other half of the say. When cells fire apart, wires depart. Not quite as catchy as the first half, but I think you get the idea. Scientists figured a lot of this stuff out by studying an animal called Aplesia californica, the California sea hare. It's a sea slug, a relative of snails, and it's common in shallow waters all up and down the California coast, like here in the canals at Venice Beach. Scientists chose to study Aplesia for two very good reasons. One, its nervous system is pretty simple compared to ours, just a few hundred neurons. And secondly, these animals are huge. Some of them can get to be up to three feet long, which means that if you study Aplesia's neurons under a microscope as you stimulate them, it's pretty easy to work out some of the things that are happening electrochemically as this animal learns. For example, the first time you squirt a jet of water at Aplesia's gill, it'll retract. It's a reflex. But if you keep squirting jets of water at that gill over and over again, it'll learn to retract less and less as it gets used to the stimulus. And scientists can trace the passage of all kinds of electrochemical signals through Aplesia's nervous system as it learns to react differently. We still don't know exactly what information those signals are encoding, but we've learned a lot about how different kinds of signals correspond to different stages in the learning process. Lately, there have been some amazing discoveries about how the human brain learns. One study actually identified a specific protein that leaps into action when a brain has a new experience. It's called Neuronal PAS Domain Protein 4, NPAS4 to its friends, and it activates a transcription program, a whole series of molecular switches that change synaptic strength all throughout the brain and help form new memories. We still have a lot of strange mysteries to solve, though. Despite all this knowledge, we still don't know what a memory is in physical terms. We know that neurons are a lot more complex than the binary switches in a computer. And we know that when a neural network learns, synapses throughout the whole network change their properties. Instead of storing information in files, the brain stores it in connections, interwoven links between patterns of neural activity. Aplesia's neurons are pretty good at making connections, but we're great at it. And the more we do it, the more stuff we learn. If we're ever going to understand what human consciousness is, we've got to work together. We're all scientists, and inside our heads is a scientific tool that's more awesome and mysterious than any computer on Earth. You don't need a lab or a grant to study this stuff. 
you are the lab. 